So we started uh, looking at the inverse Z transform ideas and the first thing that we did was use partial fraction expansion and this is a natural way to compute the inverse Z transform for functions that are rational. We will look at the second method, power series method is the next approach that we will use. Suppose x of z was something like this, then you can expand this and uh, if you did this, so this will turn out to be z squared minus half z minus 1 plus half z inverse. This is pretty straightforward for you to verify and this is in the form of the z transform expression that is this is in terms of the power series. Therefore, you can easily identify the individual terms. So, this will be 1 minus half minus 1 plus half with the n equal to 0 term being shown by this arrow. Straightforward uh, application of the direct definition. Uh, note that this has no counterpart in the Laplace transform case. And we look at this. And uh, this of course is 1 plus a z inverse a square z power minus 2 and so on. Again, when we computed the z transform of a to the n u of n, we started off with something like this and we got this closed form expression. We are now retracing our steps back just to point out the uh, relevance of the power series method in this context. And this of course is this and this you can immediately identify the terms of the series to be 1 a a square and so on. Now let us continue with the power series to the related example. So this is 1 by 1 minus a z inverse. Now the main difference is it is mod z less than mod a. Therefore, uh, when you take the inverse z transform, you expect an anti-causal sequence in the time domain. And uh, an anti-causal sequence in the time domain has positive powers of z in the z transform. Therefore, when you expand this in terms of uh, power series, you have to expand this in terms of positive powers of z, all right. And to see that you multiply by minus a inverse z and if you did this with the denominator, if you multiply by minus a inverse z, uh, for this factor you will get 1 and you will get again minus inverse z. So, this can be written as minus a inverse z times and 1 by 1 minus a inverse z can be expanded in terms of power series. So, this is nothing but 1 plus a inverse z plus a to the minus 2 z squared and so on. And therefore, 
this is minus a inverse z minus a to the minus 2 z squared minus a to the minus 3 z cubed and so on. You see the pattern here. And this of course, if you identify term by term, the inverse z transform, since this has only positive powers of z, if this were the origin, all these terms are 0. And here you have minus a to the minus 1, minus a to the minus 2, minus a to the minus 3 and so on. And clearly you recognize this as minus a to the n u of minus n minus 1. And to throw more light on this, if you looked at the previous example 1 by 1 minus a z inverse, uh, what you are really doing is you are doing long division. Therefore, you have 1 and 1 minus a z inverse here, all right. And then, so this is a throwback to your high school days. Uh, so this is just plain long division. Therefore, if you divide this, you get this. So you have a z inverse and you keep going. So you have a z inverse minus a squared z to the minus 2 and again you have a squared z to the minus 2 and you see the pattern here. So you can think of this power series that you got as just plain long division, okay. And now suppose you have 1 by 1 minus a z inverse but you wanted the anti-causal sequence. So the region of convergence is mod z less than mod a and you want the anti-causal sequence. You need to again get a power series but this time in terms of powers of z. We already saw that the way we did that here. We saw that here. Now we will again get this by long division. So this is one by one minus a z inverse, but now the we will write this by this manner minus a z inverse plus one. All right. Therefore, if you now divide, this will be minus a inverse z, so you get 1, right, minus a inverse z and just to see the pattern, so this is minus a inverse z and to get this, the next term has to be minus a to the minus 2 z squared, all right. So this will be a inverse z minus a to the minus 2 z squared, a to the minus 2 z squared and you see the pattern here. Again you see that you get an answer that you expect for the anti-causal sequence. The main point here is when you are doing now long division, you are arranging the this term like this rather than 1 minus a z inverse which was what you are normally used to. If you did this you will get in terms of negative powers of z whereas in this case because the ROC is mod z less than mod a you want a power series expansion in positive powers of z 
and which is why you need to write it like this. Let us take uh, one more example. Suppose I have x of z to be 1 plus 2z inverse and the denominator I have 1 minus uh, 2z inverse plus z to the minus 2 and you can see that the denominator is really 1 minus z inverse whole squared. Therefore, there is a second order pole at z equal to 1. Now, let me uh, state that I want the ROC to be mod z less than 1. Therefore, you can now expect an anti-causal sequence. Let us again do long division. So, now for long division if you want positive powers of z, you should write the uh, this term to be z to the minus 2 minus 2z inverse plus 1. This is how you should write this because you want the answer to contain, you want the quotient to contain positive powers of z. And now this term should be written like this 2z inverse plus 1. Therefore, this now becomes 2z, all right. So, this becomes 2z to the minus 1 minus 4 plus 2z, okay. And now, if you subtract, you get 5 minus 2z. Therefore, this becomes 5z squared and hence this becomes 5 minus 10z plus 5z squared. And if you subtract this becomes 12z minus 5z squared and let me write down, uh, sorry this is 8z. Let me write down one more term. So, this becomes 8z cubed, therefore this becomes 8z minus 16z squared plus 8z cubed and this becomes 11z squared minus 8z cubed and so on. And hence you are able to see that the inverse z transform is an anti-causal sequence. Therefore, let me mark down the n equal to 0 index term. So, for all positive indices the inverse z transform is 0 and the n equal to minus 1 term is 2, then you have 5, 8 and so on. So, this is how the time domain sequence is in terms of uh, using long division given that the ROC is mod z less than 1. Therefore, you get a sequence that is left sided. And the main point to note here is if you are going to use uh, long division, you have to arrange uh, the denominator like this, the numerator also like this. So, that when you are when you carry out long division you get positive powers of z, all right. Just as a sanity check, we can also compute the inverse z transform using a, a different method based on what we have already seen. So, recall that the given x of z is 1 plus 2 z inverse, 
the denominator after all is 1 minus z inverse whole squared and the ROC is mod z less than 1 because we want the uh, sequence to be anti causal. Now 1 by 1 minus z inverse whole squared it is given that this ROC is mod z less than 1. Uh, this was one of the things I had asked you to work out. I had worked out in class second order pole mod z greater than mod a alright. So if you had uh, tried this exercise already you would find that this answer is minus n plus 1 u of minus n minus 1. This is what the inverse z transform of 1 by 1 minus z inverse whole squared is given that mod z is less than 1 alright. So now x of n can be obtained as, so this is a product of, uh, you can think of this as a product of 2 uh, polynomials, one polynomial is 1 by 1 minus z inverse whole squared, the other polynomial is the numerator. Okay. Therefore, if you multiply in the z domain in the time domain you have to convolve and hence this is nothing but minus n plus 1 u of minus n minus 1 convolved with the inverse z transform of the numerator. The inverse z transform of the numerator is nothing but delta of n plus 2 times delta of n minus 1 okay. Therefore, the first term when you use the distributive property and convolve, so this is minus n plus 1 u of, ah, so this should be minus n minus 2. So this is minus n minus 2 plus 2 times delta of n minus 1 convolved with this therefore you have minus wherever because you are convolving it with delta of n minus 1 it is going to shift it by one sample to the right therefore wherever n is there you have to replace n by n minus 1. Therefore, this becomes 2n u of minus n minus 1 minus 2. So, this is minus n plus 1 and this can be written as u of minus n minus 1 because remember this term, this starts at n equal to minus 2 because of u of minus n minus 2. If you now replace minus n minus 2 with minus n minus 1, this will start at n equal to minus 1. But if you put n equal to minus 1 because of this term, this whole thing goes to 0. Therefore, these two are indeed the same. Minus 2n, this is nothing but minus n minus 1 and hence this is nothing but now you can combine these two terms. So this is minus 3n plus 1 u of minus n minus 1. So this is the inverse z transform and just to make sure what we did earlier is correct. So if you put n equal to minus 1, so this is if you put n equal to minus 1, this becomes minus 2, there is a minus sign outside, so this becomes 2. And if you put n equal to minus 2, so this becomes 5. Put n equal to minus 3, this becomes 8. Therefore, the first three terms are 2, 5 and 8, so which is exactly what we got here. And again the sequence starts at n equal to minus 1. 
So we have verified the long division method by another approach based on what we had known earlier. Now let us look at this particular example x of z is 1 minus a squared 1 plus a squared minus a times z plus z inverse. If you actually expand this and simplify you will find that the poles or at z equal to a and 1 over a. This is a simple exercise I want you to verify later. Therefore, there are now 3 possible ROCs. It can be mod z less than mod a or it can be between mod a and 1 over mod a. The final possibility is it is greater than 1 over mod a. Therefore, 3 different ROCs are possible. If ROC is this mod a less than mod z less than 1 over mod a, uh, what can you say about the nature of the sequence? It will be it will be two sided all right the corresponding x of n the closed form expression turns out to be this a to the mod n all right if ROC is mod z greater than 1 over mod a, then x of n will be right sided. And if ROC is mod z less than mod a, then x of n will be left sided. Now remember the context in which we are looking at this is in terms of power series expansion. Therefore, given this x of z, suppose I tell you the ROC is mod z less than mod a, then you will expand this in terms of positive powers of z to get a left sided sequence. And if I tell you the ROC is mod z is greater than 1 over mod a, you will expand this in terms of negative powers of z and you will get a right sided sequence. The point is using long division, you cannot get a two sided sequence. If you start off with x of z as is given here using long division, you cannot get a two sided sequence. That is the point to be made in this context. Uh, suppose you want a two sided sequence and you still want to use long division, all right, then the way to do that is as follows. you have to write x of z as 1 by 1 minus a z inverse minus a z by 1 minus a z all right. So, you have to verify that this indeed is the original x of z. So, simple algebra I verify that this is correct okay. Oh, sorry, this is plus. And now remember our goal is to get a two sided answer. 
So what we will do is we will expand this in negative powers of z, we will expand this factor in positive powers of z. Suppose we did that, so this is nothing but 1 plus a z inverse plus a square z power minus 2 and so on. So this is the expansion of the first term in terms of negative powers of z and as far as the second term goes, this is a z times 1 plus a z plus a squared z squared and so on. So this turns out to be 1 plus a z inverse a squared z to the minus 2 which is the first term as it is and the second factor is a z plus a squared z squared plus a cubed z cubed and so on. And if you computed the inverse transform, you recognize this is nothing but a to the mod n, right. It is very easily seen that this is indeed a to the mod n. One of the things about uh, this power series expansion, for example, if you do long division, let us go back and look at this particular example. Just by looking at this, it was not immediately clear that this is indeed minus 3n plus 1 u of minus n minus 1. That is, you could not recognize the closed form expression just by looking at this immediately. So this is a simple example, maybe you can, uh, if you try to fit a closed form expression, maybe you can guess it is after all minus 3n minus 1 times u of minus n minus 1. But if you had a more complicated expression and you had terms, it may not be immediately clear what the closed form expression is. So using long division, you will be able to get a few terms, but you may not be able to get the closed form expression for all n. So that is also what is expected when uh, it is given that uh, find the inverse z transform using long division, all you are expected is compute a few terms, 3 or 4 terms. Only in very simple cases will the general expression be uh, obvious looking at the few terms, otherwise it would not be. At the other point about uh, long division is it will only give you either left sided or right sided. If you start off from x of z and proceed as it is, uh, here is an example where you can get the intended two sided sequence by proceeding along these lines. The other example is suppose x of z is e to the z. So for what range of z is this valid? So this after all is 1 plus z by 1 factorial, z squared by 2 factorial and so on. So this is a power series and the region of convergence for this power series, yeah. So this is for, this is true for this one and once you have this immediately you can guess what the answer is going to be. So this is a left sided sequence because the z transform contains only positive powers of z. So this is the n equal to 
0 index term and 1 by 1 factorial, 1 by 2 factorial and so on. So, this is the inverse Z transform. So, in terms of power series what does this example tell you? What is the inference? What is one thing that immediately should strike you once you see x or z equal to e to the z and you have computed the inverse z transform, okay. But the previous one also was power series. So, here in this particular example it so happens that the ROC is the entire z plane, finite z plane, right. Now, I want, uh, I mean are you able to see the one striking difference between the examples that we have seen so far and this that is the main question. So, ROC if it is a finite duration uh, sequence the ROC the entire z plane except possibly for 0 and or infinity okay all right okay ah that is the main point. So, this is not a rational function. So, what this tells you is this method is applicable to functions that are both rational and not rational whereas, partial fraction expansion the way we have seen is applicable only for rational transfer functions. Uh, in terms of partial uh, fraction expansion, uh, the more general case uh, you can, if you are keen, you can look up the Mittag Leffler expansion, all right. But you do not need those kinds of methods. Uh, we are looking at simple rational functions and their inverse z transforms. And a uh, yeah, question. So, x of z equal to e power z, okay. So, this is also true for z equal to 0, correct. So, this indeed converges for z equal to 0, right. So, 0 being part of the ROC is not an issue. Uh -huh. Yes, and if mod z were if it were inside of a certain circle then it is left sided the counterpart of that. So, you can think of this as being inside of a certain circle only that this circle has infinite radius and 0 can or may or may not be part of the ROC in such cases. In this case 0 happens to be part of the ROC. So, so, uh, where is your question coming from? In terms of z equal to 0 being part of the ROC, what is it that you are saying? I am not completely sure I understand your statement. Yeah, but then the point is whether 0 is part of the ROC, right. So, you can think of this as being outside of a circle with radius 0, but then are you excluding 0? Here 0 is included. So, you do not have to say it is outside of a certain circle with z radius 0. Because if you make if you made that statement, then you are excluding z equal to 0, whereas here z equal to 0 is indeed part of the ROC. So, that is why I had written it like this. So, does that answer the question? Okay. So, for the same uh, e to the z, you are asking about a different ROC, but here for this power series, the ROC is the entire z plane. So, there is no question of having a different ROC given this expansion, whereas if you had a function like x of z equal to 1 by 1 minus a z inverse, you could have two different regions. Here that possibility does not arise. There is no other ROC for this given a e, of e to the z. Yeah, so you can expand the function around z equal to 0, all right. And then typically we are, the ROC is bounded by poles. So, if for this particular, if for the x, uh, function that you have taken, if you expand it using the Taylor series around the origin and then the series is uh, valid only for a certain circle, then that is what the, uh, yeah, you get the inverse center. You can think of this as delta of n plus 1 by 1 factorial delta of n plus 1 and so on, all right. So, remember when you are talking about the inverse z transform, it is not that 
you evaluate x of z at a certain value of z and then look at the inverse z transform pertaining to that value. The inverse z transform is I mean the power series expansion and you identify all the terms. So, even though it is true that if you put z equal to 0 you get 1, when it comes to inverse z transform you cannot evaluate x of z at one particular point and then can be concerned about its inverse z transform correct. You have to evaluate this for all z and then consider the general inverse z transform okay. And uh, as a simple application of this, you can consider something like log 1 minus AZ inverse and then you can, I want you to look at these possibilities and there is the power series expansion of log, log 1 plus X has a power series expansion between uh, minus 1 and plus 1, one of them is included the other is not. If you have log 1 plus x, 1 is included minus 1 is not. If you had log 1 minus x, then 1 is not included and minus 1 is. And log 1 plus x and log 1 minus x, these have power series expansion. So, using that expansion, try to find the inverse z transform. So, that is one approach for this and you should verify that answer with the differentiation property all right. So, if x of z were log 1 minus a z inverse and then minus z dx by dz right. So, this will be a rational function for which uh, we know the inverse z transform and then you have to relate this with minus z dx by dz after all is the uh, transform of the sequence n times x of n. Therefore, uh, if you find the inverse z transform of the derivative that will be the same as uh, the sequence whose z transform corresponds to n times x of n. From that you can deduce what x of n is. So, if you take this particular example you should, can do it by two different ways either by power series or by the derivative property and again you should verify that they are consistent with each other.